Malavar. <laughs> I can't say that. I can't say the villain's name. Hi, Vibes. Thanks for floating into another video of me sharing my opinions nobody asked for. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lisa. I yap about random shit. And since right now it's spooky month, I am talking about the Legacies. Legacies is an American fantasy drama television series that aired from October 25th, 2018 to June 16, 2022 on the CW, running for four seasons and unfortunately getting cancelled, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. I, like many others, watched the Vampire Diaries and the originals religiously. I was the target audience at the time, and where TVD was very much, oh, I'm getting thrown into the world of Supernatural with the teenage protagonist, the originals felt like a grown-up version of DVD. Me acting like I was too good for watching Legacies, even though I was just 18 when the last episode of the originals aired. It was clearly meant for a younger audience and quite frankly, I kinda had a hangover from watching the awful last seasons of DVD and then watching originals and losing the amazing cast. I did, however, decide to watch The Legacies with my friend recently. It's been a while since I last dipped my toes in this universe and I was like, bet, I'll buy it. Please be aware that this is not a spoiler free review, but it will only be about the first season for now. And obviously this video can't include all the details I myself from an experience can say even after watching some videos about the shows, you are still missing a major part of the show unless you really watch it yourself. But I digress, let's get into the video. Before we get knee deep into this yappening, I absolutely hate the Legacies logo. I hate it. It looks like a super cheaply made Disney X DVD logo and it's a crime against humanity. After the classy looking logo we had in DVD and the originals, this should not exist. This shouldn't exist. This is awful. Let's get into the episodes. I gotta admit, unless I wasn't having a watching party with my friend, I would have not continued this show after the first episode because it was so bad. It was so bad. From the writing to cast... <coughs> it is very much... I'm 16 and this is deep. I also have no idea who saw the first episode and was like, yep, that's good. Let's, let's get this shit rolling. Let's get four seasons of that shit. The rest of the episodes of season one follow the monster of the week trope. We get monsters like dragons, gargoyles, spiders, triad, necromancers, merman, genie. It felt like Buffy, where the friends, or most of the times frenemies, figure out the monster with Alaric or Dorian being child, and hope giving Buffy vibes. In the beginning it was a little weird, because quite frankly seeing a gargoyle during the daytime isn't that scary but when the show starts leaning into the creepy aspects and gets into the swing of things that eerie vibe that's when it really shines when the show is in its element like episode 8 where we get a lot of information regarding the big bad of the season it is almost filling the whole teen wolf left this show has a lot of nostalgia bait as well we get some of the guests from dvd like jeremy barf and matt <coughs> They really were like, let's take the most hated characters and put them in this show. Let's see how the fans react. <laughs> I have no fucking idea who came up with that idea, but here we are. Quite luckily, honestly, they are only there for a few scenes and then they're out. Thank God for that. But sometimes it goes really well, like episode 6 where Josie, twins, mom, is brought back. And I gotta say, I did cry because of that episode, don't judge me. I am a sucker for nostalgia bait when it's done correctly. Speaking of twins, Lizzie and Josie, Lizzie has the show's best one-liners, hands down. Her being the queen bee of the school, as she is the headmaster's daughter after all, she is struggling with her powers, therefore making her blind to the feelings of people around her. Josie's actress is phenomenal in her role. She seems to be the silent support to her shining twin sister, but actually has so many layers. 
As the more stable one of the sisters, she has lost herself to being just twin. Josie grapples with guilt, grief, and believes her feelings are oppressed by her sister Lizzie. She is also confirmed to be pansexual off screen, making her the only canonically pansexual character to appear in the entire Vampire Diaries franchise. Which just makes my queer heart so happy. To end off the girlies list, of course, we still have Hope. Hope is regarded as the main character of the show, but gets the least amount of character development. I guess we can't really be surprised because Julie Black never gives the main characters any development. She most definitely was set up to be a very traumatic character already in the original, so at times she feels a little over the top. But she also has the charm of being very badass and kicking asses like Buffy, so I can't really hold it against her. She grapples with the question if her father has found peace and absolutely breaks down in one of the episodes where in convoluted turn of events, Hope wears the ball gown Klaus gave to Caroline. At the end of the season 1, she sacrifices herself to take out the main villain of the season, Malavar. Malavar. <laughs> I can't say that! I can't say the main villain's name! Ah! Now that we're done with the girlies, I guess we have to talk about the boys. I am tackling Caleb and Milton or MG together as our vampire boys give off strong Stefan and Damon vibes. And I don't mean the charm that the original characters had, but the most basic tropes. Namely, as Caleb is super chill and comfortable with being a vampire and excels at compulsion, he gets a bit more screen time as in the school the vampires are not given real blood, but substitute, thus making them weaker, he regularly gets into trouble for consuming real blood and coercing MG into doing the same thing. MG struggles with the fact that he has died and turned into a vampire. The episode where we get to meet Milton's very religious family has strong parallels to queer kids not being accepted by their parents and sent off to, you guessed it, conversion camp. Unfortunately, as Caleb introduces real blood to MG, we find out that MG is in fact a Ripper. Ripper. Now let's get to the boys that make the love triangle with our FMC Hope. The foster brothers Landon, the designated emo scrawny kid, and Raphael, the buff werewolf. And don't worry if you forget their orphans, the show reminds you this every time they are on screen. As we are introduced to Landon, we are not sure what supernatural he is, if he is one at all, but it's clear to the viewer that he is something, even if they try to throw you off every other episode. Now, you have 10 seconds to guess what Landon is. Human, demon, hellhound or a phoenix? Phoenix, you're right, not to back my own back, but that was also my guess. He is written to be a love interest for Hope, and I think the writers forgot to give him any character traits besides being annoying. He and Hope become boyfriend and girlfriend. A super toxic one at that, but couple nonetheless. Raphael is such a boring character and honestly becomes irrelevant when we find out he has developed feelings for Hope regardless of his foster brother Landon being in a confirmed relationship with her. There are some other adult characters besides our beloved Alaric, hate the actor, not the character, but cause I simply do not care for them, as writers never give us backstory about the adults outside of the school, I won't talk about them, sorry not sorry. Let's talk about Omnius unkillable entity, the main villain of the season, Malavor. Malavor is a black puddle. It's a puddle that is in the center of a company called Triad Industries. This company has been erasing monsters with throwing them into the bottle. It has swallowed all of the monsters and erased them from history. They are only remembered as made up things in fairy tale and folklore. But if he erases them all, shouldn't they also be wiped from the books? Well, anyways, 
but Maliware is not just a puddle. Stay with me now, stay with me. It used to be a golem. Made by witches, werewolves and vampires. That's why these are the three supernaturals we have had in the DVD universe and not any of the others introduced in the legacies. Woo! Thank God this is over. Honestly, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I really enjoyed watching the first season of the legacies. I know, I know, don't crucify me please. It is not a masterpiece by any means, but it's such a blast from the past. Be it the monster of the week from Buffy, the eerie vibe of the Dean Wolf, or getting to experience the universe that I grew up with, it is a very entertaining watch that doesn't need much brain power or any attention span and is even better when you have a friend to watch it with so you can make fun of the super cringy and cheesy parts. Thanks for staying to watch until the end of me yapping once again for way too long. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, and please do comment down below if you watch the legacies and what are your opinions on it. Uh, yeah, I'm super freaking excited to see what other people think of it. And deuces! My eye is twitching. How can I film this video when my body is breaking down?